imagine, um, this is a bunch of undergraduates from sophomores to seniors who have the only requirement for the course is to have a year of geology. They don't know how to read scientific papers. They are intimidated by scientific papers, and most of them feel incredibly unconfident about their ability to do so. So that instead sort of became the major focus um, of what's going on. So even students who, we asked this in a, in a three semester survey, what their experience was reading scientific papers, in particular geology papers. And what we found out is that even students who were seniors, who were working on their senior theses, expressed a lack of confidence in their ability to um, get, be able to critically analyze scientific papers. In fact, to read them for understanding at all. I'm, I'm surprised that's not surprising. In, in what, what context do they have? Exactly. No, I mean, it shouldn't have been surprising at all, but it was, frankly. Um, because, and partly because, uh, several courses in our major sequence for geology, students are asked to read papers. What we found out later from students is that they were asked to read one or two papers assigned by the instructor, and they were, if they were asked to do anything with them, they were asked to pick out particular points in support of a, a claim on one they side They were doing the school other. with those papers. Yes. So, um, you're right, it shouldn't have been surprising, but it was, and Here's what our students looked like. 19 students, 14 males, 5 females, 15 of these were geology majors, one physics major, one chemical engineering major, and two non-science majors. Three sophomores, six juniors, six fourth year seniors, four fifth year seniors. So it was a pretty diverse mix as far as things go. Um, I was interested if anything, um, any of these characteristics or other things that we can find out about students um, correlated with their final course grade. So one of the things we looked at was, had they been in writing courses before? Did that impact their performance? Now with 19 students, there's only so much you can do, right? But what we found out is the only variable that we had that, that um, corresponded at all with their final course grade was their GPA coming into the course. So good students tended to do okay. So it didn't matter if you're a geology major or a chemical engineering major. Um, as far as what your final grade was in the course, based on this population of students. I mean, I think it did matter in some ways, but um, it, it didn't seem to, there was no mathematical, uh, statistical correlation here. Uh, is that 75-25 yeah. split uh, indicative of the regular degree majors as well? I am not sure. I think it may be. I think it's changing a little bit as we increase the numbers. What do you think? Um, so again, <laughs> this is sort of, maybe shouldn't have been surprising, um, but was, that students felt not, not confident about reading papers. The other thing that we found out, I guess these were three things that really sparked our interest in what was going on Ooh. when we had students start reading papers. Um, students didn't seem to understand, and, had, and there's no reason why they should, in retrospect, what the point of papers were. What, why, why, what's the goal of writing a paper? In particular, what they, they considered is that it was sort of an isolated thing. They didn't appreciate, I guess, in the, some literature I've read, the argumentation aspect of papers, that it needs to fit into a previously existing body of work, and it needs to be convincing, that it somehow reflects a response to what's already known. So I think their idea has, is something like, well, you, nobody knows anything about this area, so they, somebody goes out and studies it, and then they publish something. And then that's, that's basically it. That's the point. So they didn't see it as sort of contributing to a large, larger body of knowledge on the earth. Um, they tended to focus in discussion on claims um, about cr if they were correct or incorrect. So What, what kind of papers what did kind you of papers? read? Did you read letters journals, or did you read? or archival journals, there's a huge difference in the structure of those yes. papers. It happens to be something I'm working there on. There is. So, yeah, what's, um, students mostly read shorter papers. We have a journal, Geology. Okay, but in those papers, for example, 15 pages or you so. You would get far less history. Yes. Then you would get right. in a more extensive paper. You're right, absolutely. And we tried to balance, you know, that was an important thing to try to see. Is there, how do students get the context 
of the paper. So, you know, science or nature paper, it's pretty hard to get the context mm -hmm. of the argument. Yeah. Well, it also strikes me, I mean, I think that's absolutely right. It also strikes me then that the framing of the purpose of these papers was largely implicit for the students, which is that you didn't come up and say, all right, this is what we do in science. I mean, it was, it's, it's, is that right? I mean, get, so, I guess the question so is, how? I'll get to our response oh. to this, and our response to this was to be much more explicit right. about, first, some, some ideas on how you might read papers effectively, and to try to be more explicit about framing the context for these controversial things or problems that we were, we were talking about. And then we did have a discussion later in the course about, more explicitly, about the role of papers. Um, Great, but that was spurred by this, whereas yes. initially students come in, they're reading papers, they don't know why. Right, they don't know why. Well, they know why because it's been it's exactly. assigned at school. It's been assigned at school. Right. But right. How, what, what they should be doing, the strategy for reading everything. paper, right, right. the strategy for reading paper, and how, and I think beyond that, what, how does this fit into the things I'm supposed to be able to do as a scientist? But no idea. I mean, some of them probably had some idea, but... Um, overall, there seemed to be a view that I, I don't, I don't really know, and and I guess I was surprised, um, in my naive way, that students who were working in research labs had this view. And in fact, that's another thing that had no relationship to their performance in the course was whether they were conducting independent research or not, which I found sort of sad and frightening. But also, I mean, we feel like we helped them learn, so maybe we helped with that a little bit. Um, yeah. You had a, a point up there that they lacked the, the proper framework and to, to be able to analyze the, <coughs> the um, did they even know, were, were they able to articulate what a scientist was and did? Another good question. So one of the students, um, so Becky talked a little bit about some of the research she had been doing. And that was, that brought up, what is it do you actually do to do research? And once the student who was brave, brave enough or naive enough to ask um, was, you know, we were glad that he asked. But it was also surprising that some of the other students didn't have any, I seem to have any idea either. So it, it, those do seem to go along part and parcel with each other. Anything else? Did you concentrate on theoretical or experimental papers? They're very different. So in geology, in geologic time, there, there are some experimental papers having to do with the techniques. But in geology, we're, more off, we're, we're less focused on experiment and more about, um, it does. But in this particular subdiscipline, um, we, we did not focus on experimental at all. distinction between experiment and observation? I think I am, yes. And if I might ask, what's the cash value of that? What's the cash value? Um, I think because the reason that I make that distinction sometimes is because students seem to have a very particular and narrow view of what an experiment is. And I think most of the time in, in coursework, and the kind of things we really want students to learn about geology, we don't focus on that narrow view of experiment. And we fo try to focus more on geologic reasoning um, and how one interprets the rock record. I don't know if that's a good answer, but that's, that's what I have right now. We don't have <laughs> double-blind controls. But does that, but does, how does one interpret like the rock record? Count, yeah, count as an experimental. What you just said would count as an experiment paper. Experiment paper. <laughs> so I, we don't, I, would, I would count observation. Yeah, so, I mean, because it's like but, you're looking at data as opposed right. to yeah. theory. So, yeah, I, don't, I don't think there is any cash value in the distinction okay. between experiment and observation. That it's all evidence. One it way is or evidence, another. yeah. I guess there is also a sort of a legacy, at least with some studies, that focus a lot on students' ability to understand what's happening in an experiment. That's, a, and that's in that more narrow, narrow sense, and I wanted to stay that's away true. from that idea. So that's a good question. Um, so 
Let me just throw this at you guys and see what you think. This is kind of a, a nasty thing because it's maybe it's a figure in a paper, so it's not necessarily nice on PowerPoint. Um, without trying to say that these are coherent ideas that students have or that they're interconnected in any way, I tried to come up with what we were seeing as not sort of and identifying as novice views on certain aspects of sort of the things we were just talking about, um, having to do with what the role of scientific papers are um, in, in science, and things that I think have to do with student, students' views on the, the nature of scientific knowledge. Um, so, and also I think what the more expert point of views are. And I want to point out that this didn't come out of me doing research into the literature. This actually came out of Becky's um, and, and my discussion reflecting on observations that we had made um, of student discussions in class. And so this was very much driven by what was happening and not driven, um, in fact, she mentioned it first to me. She brought a lot of these things up to me that she thought students were, for instance, thinking knowledge is out there in the world to be discovered, science is an accumulation of facts about the world. And that's what it seemed like students were saying to her. Um, and so what I tried to do is sort of balance this with what I think we want students to know, or at least what I think most of us as scientists, more what we, more what we would say about science. So instead of knowledge is out there in the world to be discovered, knowledge is socially constructed as far as scientific. So research. there's going to be some pushback on that knowledge sure is socially constructed, fine. and you, the first statement on the novice, which yeah. is knowledge is out there in the world. Do you, do you really think From that, him. as Andy Pickering <laughs> said in his book, Constructing Quarks, arguing that quarks were a social construction, that any serious mountaineer would construct would write a book called Constructing Everest? <laughs> this well, is I don't Steve know that that's, I don't know that that's a fair apples, Why not? apples to Everest, apples. Why not? Everest is a brute fact about the world. <laughs> right, no, no, no. Well, well, I don't know if we want to get into this discussion here. Well, I think we do, because if we're going to call science knowledge yeah, I something, mean, I, I seriously question we should agree as scientists whether or not is. experts think that knowledge is socially constructed, except in the very broad sense that it is obviously constructed by the community of sciences. I, I but the, the question is, is how I mean, is it constructed? Very first of what <laughs> is it constructed? I spent 30 years working on this. So. Yeah, but so, but so, uh, there's a bunch of scientists here yeah. who can speak to that as well. I mean, do you really so think... So I, I think maybe a clarification, and, and again, I'm trying out language, so if I'm using something that's loaded... That's I wouldn't use I, the word socially that's constructed. That's what I'm here um, to under an find expert. out. Yeah. That's what I'm here to find out, is what language is loaded. So like, for example, science is a community of practice. Or you could say Most develops through community consensus. Yeah, or develops um, through community consensus, okay. exactly. Those words are at work, right. but the socially constructed is up to debate. Well, I, I mean, it's for math. to I call it Everest is a social construction, and to find particular roots up Everest are social constructions. The existence of the mountain isn't a social construction, and I think that would be a fairer analogy. Think, Not that I can argue yeah. with Weinberg, because yeah. he isn't here, but... <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to channel him. <laughs> so I think my, my... I don't agree with him. Oh, okay. If I could add one I'm word to the mix, mm -hmm. I would say scientific models are socially constructed. Or, I mean, if you, if you want to avoid hot-button language yeah. about constructivism, which takes on different meanings in different communities, yes. I think part of this is linguistic, um, you can argue that developed through community consensus everybody's going to agree on that different models are vetted or not vetted right. by a community consensus. I would, when I look at that, I see social construction. Fortunately, not everybody does. I, that's my two cents. I mean, are they really at us? I, I asked the question. Are there really atoms? Do you believe it, and do you think experts think that atoms are a mere social construct? No, I don't think that's the question. I don't think. No, that's the question a mere is social construct. I think well, the that's the way it's stated. Right. Well, that, so that's what that implies. Well, you might actually then do better though than in maybe also change the word knowledge or talk about things themselves and talk about the models of things. Yeah. And and. I can't deny the fact that we have, at this moment, a body of scientific knowledge, probably 50% of which is wrong. 
So the facts. Oh, you're just talking about medicine. 